Hello, hello, and welcome to this battle replay. Today we got Flying Taco on Dark Elves versus Kark on the Vampire Coast. This is a replay from the Total Tavern Season Finals we had this past weekend, and this is, I'm told, is a banger of a match. So, for Flying Taco's Dark Elves, we got Malekith up in the air on his big old dragon with a pretty typical spell kit, just Soul Sealer, and then his bound abilities, and the Destroyer, interestingly enough, not one you see a whole lot. Then we got a front line of Bleak Swords into the Sunset, Third Spears over there, a couple of Dark Shards, looks, looks like just the one. A single Black Guard, not something you see a whole lot, it needs to be a little careful of those bombers, but if it can get on top of those animated hulks or maybe some crabs or something like that, they will do absolute work. I mean, there's such a, such a chad infantry, you know, they have so much AP weapon strength, especially it's large targets. They'll be an absolute terror if you see anything like, you know, the Lampers Revenge, which are very common, or any of those other crab units. Then we got a single Bolt Thrower, just to put some damage down range, maybe snipe some artillery. Overall, just some nice damage against lightly armored targets. And then a couple of Dread Spears down the low ground just to fight for that uh, object number three. Four, Kark on Vampire Coast. So, first off, we have Silostra with just the summon, which this is a pretty common tactic in Domination, where you bring up Silostra, you have her drop the Damn Knight's Errant summon, and then you desummon her for a full refund. And then you have that Damn Knight Errant summon on the field for about 450 gold, and it can just go, just cause terror in your opponent's backline so easily. And a faction like Dark Elves that already really struggle with those elite or heavy cav units, just charging through the lines as is. The ghost ones with their full AP and their terror are just an absolute menace. So this is a very, very effective tactic here from Kark. We got the Shade Wraith Gunners. Not something you see a whole lot. So this is the Arwar Ethereal Deck Gunner with the Discouraged effect. If they've got that cursed ammunition. And they will do a pretty damn good job at clearing the Dark Elf Infantry. They do hit exceptionally hard full AP, I believe, because they are good. Oh, no, not quite full AP. Interesting. Only in the melee. But they do have that Discourage effect for minus 16 leadership, which means that once they chunk them out with a good old volley, that Discourage effect will keep them going for a very, very long time. Then we got just a smattering of zombies. We got a Vampire Fleet Admiral, or Fleet Captain with Invocation and Drowned Dead. We got a single Cannonade. Carronade? Carronade. Bombers and a couple of handguns to back it up. And then I believe on the low ground we saw some zombies and some pistol mobs being summoned in. These pistol mobs have been one of the biggest uh, buffs to Vampire Coast coming into Warhammer 3. Just 300 gold, 120 range, good weapon strength, good model count. They're just really, really solid. Vanguard deploy as well, so they're a nice reinforcement no choice. They just do really, really good work for not a whole lot of price, which is, you know, no one's complaining about that. So. So we got some bats coming in. We got the Crows of Cain as well coming to match just to try and get them off of that bolt thrower. Which does seem to be the target for Karkir right away. He wants to make sure that Bolt Thrower doesn't snipe his cannon. Because Bolt Throwers are actually exceptionally good at dueling other artillery. They're exceptionally small, which makes them hard to hit. And they're actually fairly accurate at killing other uh, other artillery models. So, Crows of Cain and Dark Riders, though, peeling that off almost immediately. Though we do have the Damn Knight's Errant summon coming in. And if you've ever played Dark Elves against Bretonia, you'll know just how paper thin Dark Elf Infantry feels against this Lance Formation. The extra mass and the acceleration of the charge bonus means they will just charge right through those Dark Elf lines, and they are coming for it. See these guys? These are braced swordsmen, so they're they're trying their best, but they are just no match for those knights that are coming right at them. Just sending them flying straight away, and they don't even stop. They just go right on through, and this is the terror of those knights. Even without the Celestial D7 and her ability to resummon them, just look at the terror they're causing. They took a chunk off that Dark Shard, dark, you know, Swordman, the Bolt Thrower, the Dark Shard. Everything's coming in to try to peel them, but nothing here for the Dark Elves has magic damage. So there's nothing to stop them. They're taking a bit of damage, you know, their leadership's going down a little bit. But they're free to just keep on running through. Their leadership's starting to waver, but they're summoned. Who cares? They terror out that, those guys for one charge. I guess they have a bit of support from that Shade Wraith Gunner. But it's just doing so much damage. Just look at this Night Summon. So, so strong. On the low ground over here, we do have some pistols poking up, starting to shoot, but those are silver shields. They won't do a whole lot. Shader is firing it over the top, combined with this, uh, this uh, cav summon. is just such a brutal combo. And the coasts are pushing up pretty aggressively here. Cannons are firing in onto, what is it, onto Malekith. And put some damage on him, keep him in check, do what they can. Crows of Cain and Malekith are just trying to chase these knights down, and they do eventually get banished, or their time runs out, I think they're uh, summoned running out, but look at the value they got in the meantime, look at the Dark of Lions in tatters, this sword routed, this Dark Shard already lost a good chunk of HP, no models though, so it's still fighting at full effectiveness, which is quite the boon for the Dark Elves, 
Fire the Lokron is getting started, and these Bleak Swords, despite being just a cheap chaff infantry, they will chew through a lot of these zombies. Zombies are really just paying for health po hit points a lot of the time. Their melee stats are really underwhelming, so they should be able to kill a lot of these zombies, especially with the support of just some Harpies coming in. Interesting, not really what I expected. You know, they should do pretty well against these pistol mobs. These pistol mobs have just garbage melee stats, so they should be able to just come in and kill all the pistols they feel like. And that looks like to be the game plan. Just coming straight for this gun, trying to shut them down. But uh, this bomber push on the high ground could be a real issue. The bolt throwers trying to take out the shader gunners, but they do have a lot of physical resist, being ethereal. So it's actually quite difficult to take them out. And it looks like the shade race are pushing up to try and take out that bolt thrower themselves in return. Shots coming in. Does it take any models? Actually, he killed three models, doing a pretty decent job taking them down, but it's not going to be fast enough, especially when Invocation and Nehek is on the field to actually kill them up. Malekith coming to help fight on the low ground, which means the Dark Elves are committing pretty heavily, and my goodness, the Harpies are actually losing the pistols. So they're getting crossfire by the other two pistol mobs and taking loads and loads of damage. They're, you know, they, they would be winning that fight, but with the support from the pistols, they're actually struggling quite heavily. They got coming in as well, so more Death Guard, and Death Guard are here, the Dark Elves. Don't have a whole lot of answers to. They really just have to rely on these dark cards to take them out. In melee, they just don't have a lot of AP options. They really, really got to rely on those archers to deal with it. I said the dark elves have completely backed off from the high ground objective, seeding that coast entirely. Which, given the strength of this coast lineup here, this is a terrifying coast blob. Like, how do you push into this? As the dark elves, there's just so much bodies here, so many you know missile units, and a lot of killing power. Cannons still crossfiring down here to Malekith, trying to just keep him in check and poke him down. And at the moment, Dark Elves are triple capped. Coast controls all three objectives. So they are really uh, hurt, really looking to get on these objectives. Pistol mobs shooting into Malekith, doing some good damage. Malekith, Malekith is a tough one to bring down. A lot of hit points, a lot of missile resist, a lot of fizz resist, and a healing from Soul Serum. He's an absolute terror. We do have more pistol mobs coming in as well. And like I said, just for the price, they're just such a good missile. You know, just 300 gold, you know, nice constant pressure at good range. Dark Elves do finally get their weight on this objective for the moment, though. Which they should be able to get pretty decisively on. There's not a whole lot of uh, coast units down here. Blackguard coming in. I'm not sure actually if Blackguard will beat these Death Guard. Death Guard just have so much weapon strength. It's not AP, but it just hits so freaking hard. And, oh yes, yeah, give me the elite infantry battles. Mm, these are both. So at least these are my favorite models in general. Just Blackguard and Death Guard are just so cool. Oh, uh, yes. Now, what they do have, though, is Malekith has breath attacks, and you'd really love to see him take off and get one right down the side of these Death Guard. But the Dark Shards just tearing them apart, but so are the cannons. The cannons are firing down here, and just look at these Black Guard melt. They're taking so much damage so fast. I wonder if that was somewhat friendly fire from the Dark Shards or the cannons, but just so much damage. But they're both already crumbling away. We got a Mantor coming in back here, getting in the back. Some Dark Riders as well rounding off, just trying to shut these guns. We got Animate Hulks coming over, and those are a good answer to Malekith. Try and just hit him in place and beat the crap out of him as they are AP. But those Black Guards will be a real, real nuisance. Their leadership is hanging on for the moment, while the Death Guards is not. They are crumbling away. They're disintegrating it even. And that is the low ground objective going pretty decisively to the Dark Elves, but they need to do something to get onto one of these high ground objectives. The Coast still holds these ones, and as long as they hold those two objectives, they have no real incentive to push down here. Anything down here that they win is extra. Another Knight Summon coming in. Should do some good work. Nice Soul Steel coming in. Should help kill Malekith up a little bit. As he was kind of starting to hurt for his uh, hit points. Get some animated Hulk. Get the pistols. Not quite catching the damn Knights, but doing just fine. Spears and Dark Shards fighting into those animated Hulks. And anything on the high ground? Okay, we saw some Dark Riders coming in. The Coast Alliance advanced a little too far forward, and now their back line is completely exposed as Vanguard Point. And that's really heads up from Taco to just realize that his opponent left this opening and just capitalized on it, on it immediately. Handguns are going to be last samurai these Dark Riders on the approach, but they do have shields, so they should be able to catch these guys out. And they do have garbage melee stats, so they should go right on down. Despite, you know, the relative cheapness of the Dark Riders, they should do good damage there. Back on the low ground, Malekith is fighting for this objective real hard. We got some Scourge Runners coming in. Scourge is a bit of an odd choice here. I don't know really what your ideal target is. They're just going to run down by the damn Knight's Air. And jeez, look at the melt. They're doing so much damage. The Frostbite taking them down to only 59 speeds. So they can't even get away. Oh boy. I'm sure a lot of people are conflicted about this one. A lot of people hate both of these units. So, uh, seeing damn Knight's Air taking the Scourge Runner is uh, a bit of a questionable one. Malekith does eventually get rid of that Knight's Errant Summon. We've got some Dark Riders here that could just push up and start shooting in, but the infantry for the Dark Elves are starting to wear a little bit thin, and the value lead is going pretty heavily into Karks here. It's about a thousand. 
Though a little bit of that is going to be damaged on Malekith, which it has been healed up. And the fight on the high ground is starting in earnest. Got some doggos coming in to try and peel off those Dark Riders, although it looks like the hand mo handgun mob is not going to be salvageable. Shade Wraith Gunners are starting to get exceptionally low. I'm not really sure what's poking at them. Is that Bolt Thrower just been chipping away at them the whole, whole time? Yeah, the Bolt Thrower. Oh, the Stealth Bolt Thrower. It left its banner behind, and now you can't even see it, and it's just sniping in. Getting some nice shots into these uh, animated hulks. Another Soul Steer coming in. That should finish off the Shade Wraiths. They have a lot of Fizz Resist, but almost no hit points. So a spell like this will do a lot of damage to them, and that'll be them crumbling away. If they survive, which I don't think they will, the Manage Core will finish them off. Shade Wraiths are off the field, just a big threat gone, and that actually swings the value lead very heavily back into Taco's favor. Jeez, that was a massive swing play. We got some Cold Knights in the backfield as well, just getting on top of those cannons. That's a lot of the coast shooting shut down. They're now just forced to rely on their melee grind, which isn't, you know, that strong with just these deckhand mobs on the front lines. They had some bombers, but the bombers are getting shut down pretty effectively by Taco. You know, there's harpies on top of them, so they can't fire. Is actually a huge play, because that's a really what Coast relies on to win their frontline fight, is those bombers just the leading infantry units. Without them, they have a much, much harder time actually grinding through all these Dark Elf units. Low ground, though, the Coast forces are resurgent. There's only a couple of tattered Dark Elf units down here, and there's nothing really to hold them off. Blackguard are in tatters, but still fighting strong. Not a whole lot here to kill them either. There's some Dread Spears helping, but there's just not a whole lot to hold Coast off at this point. Dark Elves really need some reinforcements down here if they want to hold, but I think he's just dedicating all his forces to taking the high ground. He's getting the back cap of the Cold One Knights. Just doing really, really good work on this high ground. Take a look at the battlefield here in general. The Coast are slowly starting to slip away from this uh, objective number two, but not fast enough, it looks like. Coast has a very heavy tickets lead. And uh, Dark Elves are going to be in a three-cap situation here pretty quickly if they're not careful. Anime Hulks are crumbling away trying to drag down Malekith, but Malekith is just an unholy terror on the battlefield. Already up to 1,200 value, doing an absolute work of... Kane? Is that Dark Elves? Yeah, Kane, yeah? I, I'm not a lore aficionado. But, yeah. Deckhand mobs are holding on for dear life. Crows of Cain are back, and Crows of Cain are an absolute terror. They'll tear apart these deckhand mobs all day. Now Malekith is going for the character snipe. Trying to get on the Vampire Fleet Captain. The pistol of someone coming in to try and deter him a little bit, get that damage, but he is a coming. Oh lord, he coming. He's coming for that snipe. Yeah, and that Vampire Fleet Admiral is no match for Malekith in melee. It's got respectable melee stats. I mean, it is a vampire, but Malekith is the Witch King, and he is not to be trifled with. But the Emmet Hulks here should be able to fend him off. Just fine, we got some pistols coming in as well that there are, you know, Malika said there's other things that need his attention, namely this pistol summon. The low ground has flipped back over in favor of the of the coast as they have forced off the what fewer Dark Elves remained, just the Black Guard hanging on for your life down there. Cold One Knights are doing actually a surprising amount of work. Usually those guys don't do that well against infantry, but you know, if the infantry has six melee defense, you, well, who's gonna stop them? Invocation coming in. I wouldn't be surprised to see a uh, Soul Steel go down right here as well. Dark Elves are starting to take objective number one, but they are still uh, currently three capped once again, which is a really, really rough situation to be in. And now we got the little father and son combo, Malekith and his Manticore coming in. There's the Soul Seer coming in as well, the Snipe attempt coming down. This uh, Vampire Fleet Captain is already trying to heal up with Invocation. Getting loads of damage, and Animate Hulks are trying desperately to save their Captain. But uh, Malekith is not going to take no for an answer. The Cold Knight's in there grinding as well, we got some swords coming in. Pistol mob summon, but just trying to buy some space. There's nowhere for this ca captain to go, and it takes a massive chunk for Malekith. That's huge damage. He's starting to get pushed out. It is a foot character, so he's getting knocked around a lot, but uh, these characters are just trying to get on top of it. Where even is this character in here? There they are. Right there, and they are starting to crumble away. We've well, got about 1,000 hit points left, and looks like we do have some Black or Corsairs coming out on the low ground, trying to retake the objective. Which is good. The Dark Elves are going to have to 3-cap here as they are value trading very, very effectively. They're massively ahead in the value lead, but they just don't have the boots on the ground to take the points yet. They need to get on these objectives very, very quickly. Looks like the character snipe was successful. The character is gone. And that'll mean the Coast forces are a struggle to hold. And this Dark Rider, oh, that's just so juicy getting on top of all these pistols. Shutting down two, almost three units of pistols just from that one tired Dark Rider. Such value. And now the Corsairs are just coming in to clean up at the 11th hour. Corsairs, you know, Corsairs on the Black Arc map. Finally coming in to do the work, and they are going to just chew through these zombie pirate deck and mobs. They got Murder's Prowess popped the next few seconds. They got 45 melee attack to the measly 50 melee defense of these deck and mobs. They'll take them down very, very quickly. Scourge Runner is just grinding and melee, trying to do what they can as well. Need some cap weight on the here, scurvy dogs. And now Coast only has this one objective. The three captains have flipped very, very quickly, just the one. 
And now they both just need to get bodies on this point. You know, Kark only needs to hold this objective for another two minutes and he can win the game, but he just doesn't have the forces. He only has a couple of deckhand mobs who are just going to ground down by those Corsairs. Just sending out dogs to try and hold him the point. On the high ground, these pistols are just getting gummed up by all these Dark Riders and Malekith. There's no chance of them actually getting on this objective, so it's all about that low ground. Can, you know, the coast hold on long enough? I don't think they can. The meat grinder that is these Black Art Corsairs is just going to do too much work. You're going to shred through these zombies so quickly, especially with that Dark Rider support. And that's the nice thing about Dark Riders as well in the late game is they come in with Marshal with Murder's Prowess already popped. So their stats are really, really impressive when they come out for only 450. They're doing really good work. Dark Rider Peers as well. You know, they're a decent melee cap. They'll do all right in the dogs and head on charge. But they just don't have the cap point yet. They only have about a minute left to go. Maybe 80 seconds. Can they get the bodies on this point? Or can they crumble away the coast pieces? It's just these... Oh, these darn zombies just clinging to dear life with so many models left alive. These Corsairs will beat them given enough time, but they don't have time. They've got to get on there now, and Malekith is coming to make sure it happens. He's going to come in and force his will upon these zombies and just make sure that his troops do what he demands. There's only about 50 tickets left. 50 more seconds. If Kar can hold this, he got this game. I don't think it's going to happen. He just doesn't have the bodies in place. It's just a couple of crumbling zombies. Can he get anything back here? There's, this is the biggest problem Coast has. There's just nothing fast to actually reinforce. On the high ground, they're just struggling to get back on these objectives, but it's just pistol mobs fighting in melee infantry. They're not going to do very well there. But he just doesn't have any other options. His reinforcements are too slow. The Soul Seer coming in to crumble off all the last of these zombies. Now he's coming in as well. See a breath attack? Is that what he's lining up for? Nope, he has better things to do. The cap weight is in favor of the Dark Elves, but it's coming down to the wire. Only about 20 seconds to go. The Dark Elves have to get on here, and they have to get on here now. Malekith, come intercept these these uh, gunnery mobs. Don't let them get on. Breath attack. If that can route off the zombies, kill them off. They're, they're disintegrating. That's the cap weight flip going very heavily in his favor. There's only eight seconds. Seven, six, five, four. Can the cap flip in time? Dark Elves get it with three seconds to go. Three seconds to go. I don't know if Coast can get back on these objectives. I mean, they only have to hold one for three seconds, but that requires them taking one in the first place. The low ground seems pretty secure for the Dark Elves now. There's not a whole lot of uh, Coast here, but their lines on the top are starting to wear thin. They've only got a couple of spears. A lot of their lines are tatters in tatters, but... Just nothing here to actually kill them off. There's a couple of enemy hulks coming in. And uh, what do we got coming in reinforcements? That's perfect. Cold One Knights are going to deal with these animated hulks so, so effectively. And I don't know that Kark can actually get back on these the field. He's so far down in value, about 5 five and a half k down in value. I think that's going to be Taco taking it. You know, don't want to call games too early, but there's just not a lot left for Coast. He's only got 6 units on the field to 19 for the Dark Elves. What a turnaround. That started out looking really, really good for Coast, but... Taco managed to scrap so heavily and no, do no small part to Malekith. And uh, the gunnery mobs, I just, I don't know, I can't feel like the gunnery mobs just ain't the answer. You need melee troops, you need bombers or something to actually come out and clear these infantry. The animated hulks, as good as they are, are just not grinding very well against the Dread Spears. You gotta get some bombers or something to come clear them out, but there's just nothing here for them. Breath attack coming in, uh, does okay. Really prefers infantry. These pistol mobs just, you know, they ain't cutting it. They're a good unit, but you just they're not the infantry killer you need, especially against all the silver shielded spears. The enemy hooks are starting to push on, though. And do we have reinforcements from the Dark Elves? We have spears coming up. They're a long ways off. Cold One Knights coming in as well. Dark Rider Peter's doing good work, trying to just mop up these deckhand mob pole arms. So they don't back cap. Good, good, good. But the enemy hulk blob is on the point. There's three of them here. There's not a whole lot of Dark Infantry. He only has to hold this objective for three seconds, so if he can just slip it over, but he doesn't have the cap weight. And the Cold One Knights coming in. These guys, the anti-large AP values on these guys. As well as now, uh, the Murder's Prophecy isn't quite popped. But they will just tear apart these much, much cheaper animated hulks. And I, I really don't see a way for Coast to get back on these objectives. I think... Yeah. Got a desperate dog attempt coming on the low ground, but there's Bleak Swords there to answer. Corsairs as well, rotating towards the high ground. There's another dog here, though. This could be a real threat. One won't cap, cap the swords, but two of them very much will. So if he can get a second one out here and try to actually snake that objective when there's not a lot here, everything's rotated to the high ground. If Kark can actually sneak this back cap, he could actually pull it off, but he just... Nah, he needs another dog. Yeah, you'd really love to see them both at the same time, but there we go. Second one coming in. The cap weight's not enough from there. Oh, the bolt thrower's here! The stealth bolt thrower! The bolt thrower has the cap weight! The dog arc actually can be a back cap, and I don't even think Kark knows that he's here because the banner is on the high ground! The bugged banner! I don't know if he realizes it's here, because I don't think those dogs will cap, but he can kill them very quickly if he sees them. But I don't know if he's seen them. Yeah, he's charging the swords. He doesn't see the bolt thrower. Okay, those ones got the bolt thrower. Okay, he saw the bolt thrower. They are out capping. Okay, good, good, good. 
Whew. Okay. They're out capping. Can the Dark Elves get anything down here? We got some Harpies coming in, but that's not Capture Rate. That's just going to hold them off. Maybe kill the dogs. The dogs aren't actually beating the swords. They're killing off the Bolt Thrower. They're very, very quick. And the Banner has come over here now. Pistol Mob coming in, but the Dark Elves have such a dominant position on the high ground. I expect everything will be able to rotate down here. And while the dogs were able to kill off the Bolt Thrower, the dark Bleak Swords ain't so easily crumbled. Pistol mobs coming in, but again, just the desperate Vanguard summons, and that, my friends, is that. I was very, very close. Taco had me worried there. He uh, he gave the capture points pretty early and wasn't value trading that effectively, but when that engagement finally started on the high ground, he really managed to shut down a lot of these bombers, and they just didn't get their value, really. Just only got a couple hundred value, and yeah, losing out on those bomber value... Just losing out that ammo and not being able to clear your opponent's infantry is just so crippling for Coast. It just hurts a lot when those bomb when you pay for those bombers and then they actually don't get to spend their ammo. It just hurts a lot. It's a massive money sink. Handmade Hulk's doing good work. Scurvy Dogs did alright. Pistols were summoned ad nauseum. There, there were so many pistols. Blackguard did good work. Malekith. You know, that's one of the lower values I've ever seen for Malekith, I'll be honest. Usually I see Malekith putting up like 4 or 5k pretty easily, but quiet game for him. Cross of Cain with 326 kills. Cross of Cain, I'm telling you, this this Harpy unit is so, so good. They're so hard to kill. Alright, but that is the game. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all next time.